a train journey into the world of the Himalayas. And the most splendid way to travel from Siliguri to Darjeeling is by way of the Darjeeling Himalaya toy train. Our unique train journey begins in Siliguri, a vibrant city located within the Terai Plains of North Bengal. This once peaceful provincial town with its calm streets and shops that once supplied the region's tea pickers with their daily needs has been transformed into an important traffic junction for travelers to the Himalayas. All manner of goods are sold here, and from traditional bicycle rickshaws to modern four-wheel drive vehicles, there's a large choice of transport available too. Here, business is booming, despite the scorching heat of the Indian lowlands. The surroundings of Siliguri are well worth a visit. Just a few kilometers away is Kali Mandir, a Hindu temple dedicated to the goddess Kali. And also Coronation Bridge, an old but impressive structure that was designed and built by the British in 1930. Close to the bridge is Monkey Point, where many of the mischievous creatures congregate. And at the side of the road, local farmers sell grilled corn cobs. The Salugada Buddhist monastery is most fascinating. Kalu Pinochi constructed this huge stupa that contains five noteworthy relics. And in the Iskon temple, the largest in the northeast, Lord Krishna, who is said to have once hidden in the nearby jungle, is worshipped. We return to Siliguri train station. Porters await passengers. They carry baggage to the train, frequently a laborious task. The train arrives on time. In this region, as in all of India, the train is the most important means of transport for long-distance travel. The small train begins to move away slowly. The railroad travels through the town. The buildings were constructed after the railroad. There is little traffic as only one train travels into the mountains each morning with another returning in the evening. We soon arrive at the woods at the foot of the mountainside. After the short journey, the train stops in Sukhna. The architecture of this train line is to be seen throughout the entire journey. It's part of the character of this particular railroad. The train moves slowly through the last village in the lowlands. Next, we will enter a jungle region. It's still hot and humid, but this will soon change. We ascend the hill relentlessly. For most of the time, the single track rails run parallel with the road. This section contains several bends. What lies beyond the next bend? Nobody knows. We arrive at Rongtong Station. Passengers take advantage of the short stop and get off the train. There's much difference in altitude to grow accustomed to, and the journey lasts for 10 hours. The altitude is displayed, 1,401 feet. British engineering made this pioneering work possible, an 88-kilometer railroad connection to the mountain world of the Himalayas.
The idea was to transport the world-famous tea of the same name from Darjeeling quickly, economically and safely to the coast from where it was shipped to the United Kingdom. The British discovered that Darjeeling was a pleasant holiday resort during the intense heat of the summer. In the mountains, the climate was cooler and less humid. The train continues at slow pace. It ranges between walking speed and 10 kilometers an hour. Despite the increasing altitude, the vegetation is tropical. Since 2002, the toy train has been pulled by a diesel engine. We travel past small villages that consist only of the railway lines, a road and a single row of buildings situated along the slope. Next stop, Tindaria. This station lies at an altitude of 2,822 feet. It contains train sheds. It's a more pleasant location than that of the hot lowlands. The stop in Tindaria was once traditionally used for tea time, a short break in order for passengers to become accustomed to the different climate and increasing altitude. An old and faded UNESCO notice board provides some interesting facts. The train climbs to an altitude of more than 2,000 meters, negotiates 873 bends and crosses 554 bridges. In addition to four loop lines, the trains must also shunt through six turning points. These zigzag rails facilitate the train's journey over steep terrain. At each of these points, the train travels in one direction and then exits by reversing. Without the use of this system, it would be impossible to negotiate the steep terrain. The rails are only 60 centimeters wide and often cross the road. Vehicles must wait for the train to go by. The next station is Gayabari at an altitude of 3,400 feet, a small station in the middle of the village. timetable and ticket prices are displayed. They've remained unchanged since the railroad was first opened. Alongside the station, women wash their laundry. The slow speed is essential due to the harsh terrain and frightening abysses alongside the track. The sight of the workmen standing by each point is comforting. This really is a train journey with a difference. Next we encounter the downward travelling train. This means we are halfway on our journey. A slight manoeuvre is necessary. The two trains do not always meet at the same location. The journey continues. This section can be particularly hazardous because during the monsoons, torrents of water can damage the rails. However, all is safe and sound and we arrive at the next settlement, although the buildings are so close to the track that it looks as though we could crash into them. Mahanadi Bazaar. This station is situated 4,000 feet above sea level. This is the source of the Mahanadi River that the train crossed a short time after leaving Siliguri. We don't stop here for long and the last two buildings are once again amazingly close to the track. But it all adds to the general excitement. The speed gradually decreases as the gradient here is 1 in 18, but it can be as much as 1 in 12.
It becomes cooler and the sun disappears into the mist. We travel into the clouds and leave the heat behind. The journey travels past vast abysses and sometimes we pass isolated buildings. Unfortunately, the view is restricted due to the mist. The mountain slopes are ideal for the cultivation of tea, so people began to settle here, and the area soon prospered. Kursion lies at an altitude of 4,864 feet. It's an early example of a hill town, and one of many locations once used by the British for their summer retreat. Close to the station is the only junction with traffic control. It's quite busy and it's difficult to understand how the traffic can sometimes be chaotic even up here in this remote location. The station has grown with the town, an architectural gem that has been well looked after. The stop here lasts a little longer than usual and passengers are immediately plagued by local traders. In a small outbuilding there are two old steam engines, well cared for and still working. These engines were brought here from Glasgow where they were manufactured at some time between 1899 and 1928. It was quite a feat getting them to this altitude. The railroad meant progress for this region. A number of new passengers have seated themselves in the tiny carriages and the journey continues to wind its way through the town. There's not much room. Both pedestrians and vehicles share the same track. When there was less traffic, it was far less dangerous than it is today. The small train is so slow that youngsters can walk alongside it and play it jumping on and off. Free entertainment. Wooden buildings announce the next settlement. At an altitude of 5,656 feet, Tung Station is small and tranquil. Unafraid of the train, hens peck the rails and tiny children play. The buildings are typical of this mountain region, an idyllic location on the edge of civilization. There's an old building nearby, once the official post office. Large billboards advertise this region of tea plantations. The toy train continues, past villagers for whom the sight of the train is part of daily life. Again and again, packed jeeps overtake when possible and young people run alongside the train and hold on to the carriages. The train has the right of way and the local people are fully aware of that. As we go higher, the mist becomes thicker. It's also becoming colder. People warm themselves by open fires and wear shawls and good clothing to stay warm. Soon the buildings of the next settlement emerge from the mist. We brush past them. It's even possible to touch them through the windows. Both the railroad and the settlements have grown together so are almost part of each other.
We've reached the Sonada Station at an altitude of no less than 6,552 feet. Here, life takes place on the street and people are dressed for the cold. The children use the rails outside their dwellings as play areas and the adults use them as pathways. The train announces itself with the customary tooting. The villagers go about their daily tasks alongside the railway line. Fish is prepared and craftsmen wait for customers. Life here is conducted at its own pace, slow and uncomplicated. Sonada is a typical street village situated by the side of the railroad. It originated during construction of the railroad in the 1890s. In this region settled Bhutia, Tibetans, Lepcha and Nepali. A unique mixture of mountain people that are a fine example of those who have learned to live together in harmony. Various religions coexist here. In addition to Buddhism, several natural religions are also practiced here. The stupas of a Tibetan monastery complex lie alongside the rails and can be seen from the train. Religion plays an important role in the daily life of the people. Sonada Station is located in the heart of the village. A beautiful old building that is typical of British architecture. From time to time, the regular train overtakes a tourist train that carries travelers who are fascinated by old railways and who often like to stop in order to take photos. Both nostalgia and scenery make a good picture. We travel further, the mist becomes thicker. It's difficult to see the depth of the abysses that flank the line. The passage through Jore Bunglo is so narrow that the police must stop the road vehicles so that the train can travel through the village without danger. Several jeeps gather in the narrow village street that is cloaked in a mysterious mist. Finally, we arrive at Goom Station. At 7,407 feet, the railroad's highest point. The station looks sad and bleak in the mist. The passengers are not phased by the remoteness of this place. Despite the dense mist, they take advantage of the stop to take further photos. From Goom, there are trips to Tiger Hill. Jeeps take the train's passengers up to a vantage point of 8,497 feet above sea level. Fortunately, the mist gradually clears, revealing the impressive peaks of the Himalayas. Without the mist, Goom looks totally different, and life returns to its pretty buildings and lanes. The people here earn their living from the tea plantations. The village is very relaxing. Men stand around chatting, women do their shopping, and there's even a Bengali hairdresser. The Yiga Choling Monastery in Goom dates back to 1850. It's located 100 meters from the railway station. It's a place of relaxation and meditation. Magnificently painted both inside and out, with wall painting after wall painting, and religious images guard the entrance to the monastery. Inside is an illustration of the Maitreya Buddha, a special Buddha whose arrival is yet to come, a demonstration of true devotion.
When the train has gone, jeeps and taxis crowd the narrow street that travels through the village and traders offer their goods on the railway line outside their doors. Also in Goom, the railway station is situated in the centre of the village and lies at the highest point of the mountain pass. Old notice boards declare that this was once the highest train station in the world and the people look like actors in front of some incredible movie backdrop. Quite surreal scenery at the edge of the world's highest mountains. From here, the train makes its descent to Darjeeling and the mist returns. The Batasia Loop leads around a hill in the center of which is a memorial. Thus, an immense difference in altitude was overcome. Again, huts have been built right alongside the track. And from here, the well-planned and essential loop can be seen. Long bends lead the toy train towards its final destination. A repeat of the same, slopes, rails, road and rock faces. The steep slope contains more and more settlements and each bend brings us closer to the most famous destination of our journey. Here the bends become narrower and the concentration of settlements indicates the importance of this region. This is the junction of routes from India to Sikkim, Bhutan and Tibet. And now, Darjeeling, the final destination of our journey. From the hot Siliguri in the lowlands up into the cool mountains at more than 6,890 feet. The station is the terminal for the narrow gauge railway. Darjeeling is full of history. This region was once part of the independent kingdom of Sikkim until the British arrived. In 1814, when the East India Company came here for the first time, about 200 people lived on the tree-lined slopes. Sikkim was protected by the Nepalese, and General Lloyd, the British representative, used this area for the recovery of his soldiers. Soon the work on offer attracted thousands of people who subsequently settled here. The tree-lined slopes were cleared and tea plantations were created. Summer tourism was introduced, but in winter the climate was extremely cold. A mixture of ethnic peoples originated here, joined together by the strict discipline and administration of the British. There have been tea plantations here since 1840. The splendid tea growing area around Darjeeling has a favorable geographical and climatic location and produces one of the best teas in the world. Each tea garden is organized like a small village. The workers live with their families close to the factories and their welfare services are free. The quality of high-grade tea depends on the altitude at which it's grown. Climate, accuracy of harvesting and careful manufacture all play their part. In this small cemetery, British General George Will Awa Lloyd was laid to rest. He died on the 4th of June, 1865. And Sherpa Tenzing Norgay was also remembered here.
Darjeeling short main street with its many shops and restaurants leads to Chorasta Square in which noble buildings are reminiscent of glorious times gone by. Thank you to the Darjeeling Himalayan toy train for a unique journey and one which will not easily be forgotten.